I think that your brand is very, very well documented. But for those who don't know who Alicia J is, could you give us a little introduction to who Alicia J is uh, to the Untold Podcast community? Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Alicia J is a work in progress, mm. just like everybody else. Uh, but I do have a blog called Tall Swag that I've cultivated over the years. It's just a way to tell my story and to help people to stand tall every day in every way. You know, it's been a, a process of getting to that. Mm. Um, I still don't really know exactly what it looks like. To be honest, I'm waiting for some steps from God to, to really make it what I know it's going to be. Yeah. But right now it's a lifestyle platform um, to inspire and enhance people's lives. Mm, that's beautiful. I love how you already interjected God into the conversation um, and you reflected your blog being on this website. You had this blog entry about making the leap. Yes. So that's what I really want to talk about, about, you know, you established your career um, in athletics mm -hmm. and you made the leap from being an employee to an entrepreneur. Like, yes. Let's talk about that leap. What was Ooh. that like? Um, it's still scary to this very moment that I'm sitting here. Mm. Um, I worked for the Golden State Warriors for 13 years. So I worked in game operations and then I worked in marketing for the last year that I was there. And for the last six years that I was there, I was praying because mm. I felt some unrest. I felt that I wasn't living in my purpose. I felt that there was more for me. Mm. Like it, it was great. Mm -hmm. Well, actually it was good but I felt like there were greater things. And it's really hard to go from good to great. You know, it's, it's really hard to get there. Yeah. Um, but I knew that it was coming. I just didn't know when. So I prayed and I prayed. God made it clear that I needed to move. And did you ask for, hey, God, give me a clear, <laughs> a clear <laughs> sign. Like, it's time for you to leave. Like, yeah, like, yeah. honestly, I would want to know what your prayers were were actually like, if you don't mind me asking. You know, most of them were that he give me a graceful exit. Mm. Yeah, because I knew that there was an exit coming. I can't really explain to you exactly why I knew it, but I just, you know, I've kind of felt in a way that I was being held back from the person that God created me to be. Mm. You know, when you work for somebody else, and I'm not saying that it's a bad thing because there's so many ways you can glorify God through doing that. And I know that I did. Um, but when he tells you to move and you're moving with him, like intentionally, yeah. you know that you're in your purpose. And it doesn't matter really who you're working for because you know that you're working for him and not for them. But that is not how I felt when I was there. And I knew there were things that he still needed me to accomplish, but I knew that I needed to be prayerful and seek it so that when it did come, I would see it very clearly. Right. So in your mind, when you started making this, I'll say calculated risk of, man, okay, how do I turn a blog into a business? Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, if, if that's essentially what it is, correct? Right. So it is, uh -huh. but right now even I have a part-time job mm. that I'm working to like have a base income so that I know all my bills and stuff will be paid, yep. but it's allowed me to have more time to seek these other things that yeah. I'm building. It's bravely ironic that you're in the Bay Area, which mm -hmm. we know in the Silicon Valley, everything is so technology focused yeah, and everything is so metric driven and is not necessarily... It doesn't necessarily stem to purpose. Mm -hmm. And so was that scary for you to make that leap to say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to not only fulfill my purpose, but I want to help other people fulfill theirs. So it's scary in a worldly view, because if I'm looking at a worldly view, I gave up a lot yeah. to, to do this. But knowing that it's came, coming from God. I can't be mad at that. Like, yeah. I, I have to rest in the peace of that. Mm. Um, I have to trust my faith over my feelings. And Are you a preacher? No. <laughs> <laughs> you dropping bars right now. You, you have to trust your faith over your feelings. Yeah, that is, I actually have that up on my wall because uh, I think my feelings are my Achilles heel. Mm. You know, they'll get in my way a lot. I get in my own way a lot with my feelings. And, uh, you know, I can't even lie, after I put in my 
two week notice or whatever, my feelings got the best of me. And uh, I became depressed, you know, it was, it was a hard time. I mean, even though I went to Europe for three weeks and that was amazing, but it was just, who am I? You know, wow. I had found that I put my identity into my work. And if anything, realizing that I was doing that was purpose enough mm. to leave because my identity needs to be in him and not in any job that I have, not in my health, not in the way I look, not in the way I dress or anything of that nature. And to see that I was doing that was huge. That was a breakthrough in my life. Wow. Just before we started this interview, you mentioned that you pray with your mom. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I actually do. My sisters and I, we pray with our mom Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it, we notice a difference when we miss mm -hmm. that. Have you seen how prayer has influenced and had an effect on your career? Your, you know, yeah, your life. Without a doubt. Uh, prayer centers me. Uh, prayer enhances, strengthens. It is my relationship with God. You know, it is our way to speak with him yeah. um, and to, to foster his ideals and his power and all of those things. And so prayer is like super important. It's huge. Um, I actually corporately pray with my church every Monday night too. Mm -hmm. The power of praying with other people is huge. Um, I mean, he's always there, right, when you pray, but just being in a room with other people brings that, that centeredness within community, mm -hmm. and you need community to get through this life. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So um, prayer is huge. Yeah. Prayer is huge. And I went through a lot of stuff within my last six years at my job, and prayer would always calm me down and keep me centered and know that you know, I have that line. You can read the Bible all you want to and know all the scriptures that you want to, but if you don't have a relationship, yeah. you know, that's the core of it. Yeah. Um, and prayer is huge, a huge component of that. Yeah. So, you know, something you mentioned earlier is, you know, about the fears of making, making the transition and really like settling into that and becoming what I think Alicia is her truest self. From everything I've seen and read about you, I believe you are your truest self. Like, Talk about the difficulty to get to your truest self. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Um, I think it's still difficult, right? Um, you have this worldly view of things. Um, and I'm very vocal about my story, about my purpose, about who I am. And when you tell those things, people think it's attack on their nature. Come on. Preach. And <laughs> it's absolutely not. Yeah, you know, I'm just telling my story. I'm not telling you how to live yours. Yeah. If you gleam anything from my story, great. Um, thank you. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's part of my purpose too, but I'm not going to tell you how to be yeah. through the actions that I'm doing, right? I want I want to dig into that. Yeah. Cuz before we started this interview, you said, "Hey, let's talk about some some of the things that are hard to talk about." Mm -hmm. Um, and I think lifestyle, yes. Particularly with faith, people will perceive that because you choose to live this way that it is a declaration or an attack on how someone else may live differently. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Well, I've lost friends, like friends that I thought would be in my wedding because of the choices that I make. They felt like it was a judgment on the choices that they make. And the true friends that I have know that that's not the case, right? And those are the people that you focus on. But the world will be quick to be intimidated by the choices that you make because they feel like they belittle their choices mm. and in no way, shape or form. Am I doing that? I am called to wait for my husband. I am called to not drink alcohol. Mm. I am called to do certain things in my life. And I do those things to the best of my ability, mm. but that doesn't mean that they're a threat to you right. or an infringement on what you do in your life. And that I've never really understood that. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. not something and it hurts Yeah, straight up. But uh, being a Christian isn't comfortable and nor should it be. Mm. Well, thank you. Like, honestly, I can say personally, I'm influenced by your desire to really what honestly is choosing to blaze a, a trail. I, too, have been waiting my whole life 
it's not a popular choice. Mm -mm. It's not an attractive thing. To be honest with you, Mm -hmm. to most. Right. I myself don't drink. It's not necessarily an attractive thing. Mm -mm. But when I see other people that are willing to inspire others by living out their purpose and their faith and do it confidently, it makes me even more confident. Mm. So thank you. No, like, thank you for sharing that with me. Man, I, 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 I never imagined I would say this on this podcast, but I think the fact that I'm interviewing you mm-hmm. has given me the faith to actually, hey, you know what? This is how I am. Yep. Well, yeah. and I think, and thank you for yeah, saying that. For sure. That is one of the reasons why I share my story is because mm-hmm. it's not pushed by the world it's not pushed by society and Mm. i feel like people don't even think it's an option anymore Mm. they don't think that oh i could not drink like who says that yeah where in the media is someone going to see that and say oh well i don't have to either right you know by no means am i telling you that you should do something but i'm here to tell you that you can if you want to it's still an option and that's the difference, yeah. you know. Now, as as beautiful, um, I'm interested in your in your roots. From what I know about you being from Oregon, so I used to work in college basketball, and every time we played Oregon and Oregon State, I was terrified because <laughs> I was by far, honestly, the darkest thing <laughs> in the state. Yeah, you know. So I still count when I go home. Wow. So yeah, it, it hasn't changed. It has changed in a lot of ways, I think, outwardly, but inwardly, I, there's still a problem. Mm-hmm. And I grew up in Beaverton. Yeah. So even though it's about 20 minutes from Portland, it is vastly different. Yeah. You know, so I love where I'm from and Portland is great um, in so many ways. But there, you know, there's an issue there. I think there's issues everywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, they're just presented differently, covered up. Um, maybe they're just outward and overt. Yeah. And we're not ready to see that. (laughs) It's a little shocking to us. But I'd almost rather see that Mm -hmm. than have something uh, be artificial, Mm -hmm. you know, where there's a problem underneath and you're telling me that it's fine and it's not. Okay. See, now you now you now you digging deep. You talking about overt versus covert. I'm curious as a woman of color who's an entrepreneur now, have you started to experience issues of covert? perhaps what you think could be racism or maybe even sexism. I would say that I experienced that more in a corporate environment than I have being an entrepreneur. Got it. Yeah. You really steer the ship and you get to work with the people that you want to work with. If there's an issue or it's not something that works for you, you get to steer the other way, you know, and that's freeing for me. Um, I think a lot of women, black women, women with natural hair, uh, strong women, women who have uh, creativeness and amazing ideas and everything, they go through all of those things um, in corporate environments. I'm here to say that I did, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. and it's something that I don't ever want in my space. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm, one of the reasons why I want to work for myself. I, yeah, I love that. Cause I I think honestly what it does is it inhibits innovation. You know, innovation is really just birthed from a place of a willingness to take a risk and jump and take a leap. And I feel like that's what you're doing with your whole life. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and I was going to say, I'm not just doing it for, the job either. Mm. I'm not just doing it for what I feel my purpose is. I, well, I feel like my purpose is holistic. Mm. So in a lot of ways I was holding back on my personal life and I was holding back on, uh, maybe pursuing ministry or something like that because I felt like I didn't have time to do so, Mm. or I didn't have the space for it. Um, I didn't have the tools to really accept those things in my life. Um, And so that's another reason why I took that leap. So let me ask you this. So being from Beaverton, Oregon, Mm -hmm. which is very different from Oakland, California, (laughs) which is where you work. Day and night. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, In so many ways, you know, culturally. And then also, you know, because we're in the Silicon Valley, I'm curious to know, 
with what you do with your career now, how is it distinctly unique to the Silicon Valley? In other words, would your product look different if you lived in Beaverton, Oregon? Like how is the Silicon Valley influence and shape where you want to take your entrepreneurial career? I don't know if it's necessarily the Silicon Valley per se, but just my overall experiences and growth as a person, mm. it would look different if I just stayed in Beaverton. Mm. Because I always say that Beaverton raised me and Oakland made me who I am. And, and it could have been like Chicago or New York or wherever, yeah. but I needed to be out of that environment to become the person that I am today. Yeah. So it would look a lot different. I don't even know if it would be there because... I probably would be in just a one track, like this is what I'm gonna do, right. and that's it. Um, I think just moving away from home as much as I love being with my family yep. and those type of things, and there's value there, and my mom and my brother and everybody, you know, my dad and everybody, they instilled these amazing things in me that I needed to move forward, mm -hmm. but I needed that different perspective to get to where I am today. Got you. I think technology has created this detachment, mm -hmm. you know? You said on your social feed once, you said something like, this really hit me. It was like, imagine if you prayed enough, or prayed as much as you were on Instagram. Yeah. Like if you took that time, you were scrolling and you were actually praying. Technology is great. Yeah. I think that you can do so many amazing things with it, but it can also just be a detriment to you. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the way that you use it as well. You know, making sure that your space yeah. is protected is huge. Not letting messages come through that you don't agree with or that don't foster who you are as a person yep. huge use the mute button block uh, limit your time right. do whatever you have to do um, a lot of people tell me you don't post enough you don't do this enough and and that kind of thing and to be honest i'm not here for likes i'm here for change mm. and that doesn't you know fabricating uh, posts on a daily basis that's not changing anything that's not showing people who you are that's literally like fabricating another story mm. and you're not living in your purpose if you're not walking in it and telling the actual things that are happening to you right you know Woo. okay now i really want to ask something deep because i actually had this discussion with my boy yesterday he's a musician i'm a creative as well mm -hmm. and we found ourselves doing this curation of our ideas our artistic ideas because of a fear that technology has created like oh we need to post so let me be anxious and hurry up and put something out and we just really hated what it was doing to us as yeah. artists like how do you make the decision on what it is you're going to post like what's the process like for you i'm really creative when it comes to what i shoot i like to shoot I like to shoot a lot of tall clothing just because it's so hard for tall women to find it. And so yeah. that's kind of what most of my photos are about, but it's also a feeling. Um, also, it's about doing the last thing that God told you to do. So mm -hmm. he very He very well might say, like that post about uh, Instagram mm -hmm. versus spending time with God, like that was a very like, yeah. I saw it and he was like, you need to post that right now. Wow. You know? So I think it's just being in tune with who you are and where you're at. Mm. Um, right now, I'm, I really feel, and, and God has told me, and I've kind of been ignoring him, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. out of fear, that I need to share more video-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I need to share more about the process and the wins, the losses, and all of that. Um, and so I'm looking at what that looks like. And yeah. I've had so much input from people saying, well, you need to do this. This will go viral, whatever. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go viral. Yeah. I just, I want to be authentic. I want to tell what I'm supposed to and listen to what I'm supposed to say, you know? And so it takes time. Yep. I think it takes, no, I don't think, I know it takes a lot of prayer um, and really listening. I think we pray a lot and we don't listen enough. Mm. So I've been trying to do that more too. Yeah. There's a video that you posted on YouTube. I think it was on your personal channel mm -hmm. where it, you were telling telling your story and it, it almost brought you to tears. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Yeah, like, how can you do more of that? Because exactly. it was so authentic. It wasn't a, oh, I, let me do something that's going to make me go viral. Like, no, people mess with authenticity at the end of the day. They do. Like, And yeah. I think being transparent is huge, too, because 
we're so used to these like filters and yeah. showing people just the parts that we want them to see. Um, but you know, right now, even though this is one of the most exciting times of my life and I'm seeing God work in ways that just blows my mind, yeah. I'm also incredibly uncomfortable. And there are days where I'm just like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Write it on the wall, <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But nothing grows out of comfort. And so I know I'm on the right path. I know I'm doing the right thing. But just saying, oh, you know, this is going great. And uh, I'm an entrepreneur and da, da, da. that's mm -hmm. not serving anyone because it's not real. I have my doubts. I have my fears. I have my days where I cry. Yeah, yeah. And I need to share that. We all need to share that. That's, that's how we're going to get back to the real because we're not there yet. You know, so real, man. Uh, you know, I'm really curious as to how, like I said earlier, I've seen you on several television shows. I think I've seen you on TLC. And like, how did all that begin? How did people find you as, I mean, what did they Google? <laughs> right. So the TLC thing was interesting. I was on a show called My Giant Life. Yeah. And it actually goes against everything my brand kind of stands for mm. because the giant thing is, is a huge no-no in the tall community. And, mm. it, and it was one of the things I was bullied as a kid for my height and my race. Um, I, I would have people call me Jolly Green Giant. Um, mm. People just berate me every day for just being different yeah. than they were. Not understanding that being a tall woman is a gift, mm. right? Mm. I didn't understand it at the time because all these people who actually revered my height and were jealous that they didn't have it, mm. you know, they were attacking it because they wanted to make it less than it was. Yeah. And I was believing these lies that these people were telling me. And so once I realized that my height is one of my gifts and it's something that God has given me, um, I ran with it. And that's why I, cr I created Tall Swag. Mm. Um, but when TLC came at me with My Giant Life, I was like, mm -mm, I am not doing that show. You, <laughs> you know, you called it My Giant Life. Like, how dare you? Yeah. You know, um, but the more that I looked at it, the more that I saw that it was just a word. Mm. You know, giant is just a word. And really, I do have a giant life. I have a giant faith. Wow. Um, I have a giant personality. Like, there's so many things that I do have in it. I just looked at it as an amazing way to tell my story. Yeah. And I did. You know, my I just talked about being a uh, tall, vibrant, single woman who is a Christian, loves God, and is waiting for her husband. Yeah. And that was what I talked about on that show. Yeah. And it was a blessing. I had so many women say, thank you for even showing me that it was an option. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yes, there were some uncomfortable things that happened on that show <laughs> that I didn't like. It's reality TV at the end of the day. Yeah. But the good parts outweighed the parts that were uncomfortable for me. Very mature. Like, I, that's an amazing decision you made to, you know, just look past that. Mm. Um, it was hard. I'm not even going to yeah. lie. It was really hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, and then I was asking everyone, should I do this? Should I do this? And people were giving me all these opinions and everything. But at the end of the day, I just went to God and I was like, what do you want me to do? Wow. You know, we can listen to all these other people about our path, but he's the only one that really matters. So mm -hmm. I've, I've really stopped doing that a lot in my life. You know, when we want something will go to the people that we think are going to give us the answer we want. Mm. And instead I go to him to get the answer that I need. That's beautiful, man. Last question is regarding legacy. I feel like in the Bay area, you know, I mean, I didn't mean for this to be all biblical, but you know, in the Bible it says like, you know, you should leave a, a reward for your children's children, mm -hmm. you know, and you want things to IPO and, you know, this, this is what tech culture tells you. But what's the legacy you want to leave when you're done with your career? Like, what's the legacy you want to leave? I just want people to say that she did what she was supposed to do while she was here. Yeah, you can't. I can't remember who told me this and I should because it was an important thing throughout my life, but. You never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Yeah. So I don't, all this stuff, all this wealth, all of everything, it's great. And I hope that, you know, everything takes off and God blesses me in ways so I can bless others. Yeah. That's all I want. But I can't take any of it with me. 
I want to leave a mark on people and I want them to say she did what she was here to do and she did it well. And then I want him to say that. Mm. That's what I want. Well done. Yep. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Alicia J, um, for being on the Untold Podcast. Before we get out of here, I'd love for you to tell people how they can find you in the global sphere of technology. In, in all the spheres. <laughs> in um, all the spheres, yeah. In all the spheres. I am on tallswag.com, so that is my website. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be changing in vastly different ways. Um, but then everything else is at Tall Swag. Dope, dope. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Uh, for being on Untold Podcast. And that's, yeah. We out. <laughs> <laughs>